first, let's use our recursive strategy to calculate the change in the actuarial present value of the whole life insurance payable at the end of the year on death. We know that this is equal to either they die in the first year and they get the benefit discounted back with one year of interest. Here we'll assume the benefit is one. Or they live and they get a new insurance at X plus one. Again, this is all discounted back for a year of interest. Okay? We're told AX. Our discount rate is 5%, so um, our discount factor is going to be 0.95. Uh, QX originally is 0.1, so PX will be 0.9. We can solve for this new insurance at on X at X plus 1, and that is... 0.2398. Okay, so we've moved forwards to find out what our insurance is at x plus 1. Now I'm going to go backwards using what we know about our new survival probabilities and how those change to get our new actuarial present value of our insurance on x. So how does this change based on our new survival probabilities? So our new actuarial present value of this insurance, I'm going to use the same recursive formula, but now our probability of dying in the first year is 0.2. That makes P, of course, 0.8. And we know that our insurance at X plus 1 is 0.2. And so our new AX turns out to be 0.3722. So now we're going to want to see what the change is to our actuarial present value of that whole life insurance on the joint status payable at the end of the year of death. So it's the same idea here. The actuarial present value of this insurance on our joint status is either the joint status fails in the first year, so this would mean the first death occurs in this first year. If that happens, you get the insurance of one discounted back for one year, or period, I'm assuming it's a year, plus if the joint status survives the first year, so the first death or failure doesn't occur in the first year, so they both survive, you get a new insurance on this joint status. Now it's x plus 1 and y plus 1. And again, this is all discounted back with one year of interest. So we found this to be 0.32. The probability that the first death does occur in the first year. I think the easiest way to write that is to say that it's 1 minus the probability that the first death doesn't occur in the first year. So 1 minus the probability that the first death doesn't occur in the first year means that they both survived. So Px times Py. Or 0.9 times 0.98, okay, plus 0.95, again this is the probability that the joint status survives the first year, 
or in other words, the probability that the first death or failure does not occur in the first year, so they must both survive the first year, px times py. Okay, we can solve for the actuarial present value of this insurance on the joint life status a year from now, and that should be 0.2481. Okay, so now we want to work backwards to see how the change in our QX will affect the joint life status XY. The new actuarial present value of that insurance is going to be, again, we're using the same recursive formula, but now the probability of dying in the first year is 0.2 instead of 0.1. So this is <coughs> a benefit of one discounted back one year if the joint life status fails in the first year, which is one minus the probability that survives in the first year, which means they both survive, which now is 0.8 times 0.98, okay? Or they could survive, and if they both survive, 0.8 times 0.98, you get the new insurance, which we said was 0.2481, and again, that's all discounted back with one, year's, uh, with one year of interest. So this adjusted actuarial present value is 0.39. That worked out nicely. Now we get to put everything all together. Our survival probabilities have changed. So we found how that affected our insurance on the joint life status and how it affected our insurance on X. Of course, it's not going to affect Y. So we can plug these two new values in with the actuarial present value of our insurance on Y and see what our new actuarial present value of the insurance on the last survivor status is taking into account that change in probabilities. So, Let's see, we said that our new insurance on X was 0.3722. Our insurance on Y is still, the actual present value of our insurance on Y is still 0.28. This is what we're trying to find. And our adjusted actuarial present value of the insurance on the joint status was 0.39. Okay, so you should get you should get 0.2622 for this new adjusted value. So as a result of the increase in the survival probabilities. The actuarial present value of this insurance on the last survivor status increased by 0.0022. I hope that was a good review and everything was clear. If something in this video wasn't clear, please let me know and post a comment or something. Um, I want it to make sense. Happy studying!